Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And Pete J. And Pete, we are coming to you today again here from back home in Phoenix, Arizona. Back here for one more game as the as the camera pans around our lovely, lovely city here. Um, we're going to come talk to you about where the Bee Wolves are right now. Pete, the Bee Wolves are playing pretty good in the last five games, aren't they? And we got a we now got a season of uh, a record of five and twelve, and it, it's a totally different looking team than it was at the start of the season, Pete. Yeah, it is. They uh, they went up to uh, had a couple of statement games here. They went up to uh, Tacoma and they played uh, the Herbisaurs, uh two games. So they were up in, in Tacoma for for about a week. Um, when they rolled into town, the Herbisaurs were alone in first place, and when they rolled out, they were trailing the Nemesis. So that's exactly what we wanted to happen. The Beewolves went up and put put uh, put a couple of games on the Herbisaurs and. Uh, Really, it was the pitching. We got uh, two great outings by our starting pitchers and uh, Hurley Bender. Um, honestly, one one for the books. That's got to go down in history as being one of his greatest games he's played, Tom. Yeah, I got to tell you, Pete, the Hurley Bender show as it's going to go down and be Wolves 2020 lore. <clears throat> started in the bottom of the first with this strikeout by Morton Stamberg. Uh, Bender's first notch in his belt and a solid performance, the likes of which we haven't seen all year. Um, Unfortunately, he made a bad throw, the Beeble's only error, in the bottom of the next inning with this bad toss over Torn's head and passed Magic Moore into center field. And this gives the Herbisaurs an early 1-0 lead, uh, which was unfortunate. But, but he regains his composure as he puts away Milo Stewart to end the side and then yoinks Sacks with this beautiful slider in the bottom of the third. Yeah, after the overthrow, he seemed to lock in, and he was uh, he was not having it. Yes. Well, Bender may have been a little overconfident when he pitched this fastball to Henry Hamster in the bottom of the fourth, and Hamster almost put this ball into the Pacific with this monster home run that got the Herbisaurs out in front by two. But that was that was going to be it, and the hammer was about to drop as the Beebles were having none of it, or I should say Hurley Bender was having none of it, as he does what so few pitchers do, Pete, and that's to go long on Jem Qualita, as he does here in the bottom of the fifth, to put the Beebles on the board. It, it, rarely do you see a pitcher take one out like that. It was, a, it was a beautiful thing to see. It was. It was, and there was no doubt right from the uh, right from the bat that that was that thing was going out almost straight away center field, I believe. Yeah. Well, and then he proceeds to go on a tear by putting away five more batters through the fifth sixth and seventh innings and yeah, pete it was a beautiful thing to watch but that fading slider of his is one of my favorite pitches it really is yeah yeah he dialed in um between the, the pitching and the hitting we were we were saying that uh, come the end of the game that they were going to have to award him two stars for the you know the three stars of the game the one had to be for offense and the second one was going to have to be for his defense he was he was on yeah they should have but they didn't <laughs> anyway finally in the top of the eighth, after Bender, get, Bender gets the second base of the double, Buster Biggs comes to the plate and puts this one in the outfield, bringing Bender home, who beats the tag and ties the game up. But the Beavils weren't done there. Still in the bottom of the eighth, with runners at second and third, Billy LeBoink steps to the plate and smashes this one in the center field, bringing home both runners and putting the Wolves ahead 4-2. to two. And that's just how the game ends when Juan Rojas comes to the plate in the bottom of the ninth with runners at first and second, and he hits Bender's 110th pitch down the third baseline to Bertha Banks, and the B-Wolves take two from the Herbosaurus in their own park, Pete. What a game. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly uh, what we wanted to see out of the B-Wolves. Uh, hopefully we're going to start seeing better play out of them now. And uh, and when you look at the uh, the standings, they're, they're, I mean, it's almost like the uh, first 11 games – didn't happen, you know. Yeah. Um, they're only a game behind the sirloins, uh, two games behind the uh, water bullets. Um, so, you know, they're they're climbing, and that's what we wanted out of them at this point. So, um, yeah, one in ten in the first eleven, and now uh, they're what four and uh, four and two so far. So, not bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, not yeah. bad. Well, there's, there's nine other games to, to uh, report on around the league that may change the, the standings just slightly, Pete, and it's going to start with the Hot Corners visiting the Moose out there in Detroit. Can you tell me how that one shaped up? Certainly. 
Hot Corners and the Moose uh, back and forth, and the Hot Corners take it 4-3. The Grapplers go down to visit the Blowfish in Los Angeles, and it is a Blowfish victory 9-6. The Overdogs in visiting the Freebooters, and it's Overdogs 5-2. There's a surprise. Heaters go to visit the Frontrunners in Philly, and the Frontrunners are at 4-2. The Moonstars in the Philadelphia Freedom Moonstars take that one 4-3. Goldcoats visit the Buzzards. Buzzards win at 3-zip. The Crocs in the Hot Corners... Hot Corners take it, 6-2. Freebooters then go to Hawaii to play the, the Burners, and it's close, very close, but the Burners take it 7-6. Platypie and these Sandcats, and it's uh, Sandcats all the way, 11-4. So at the end of those games, Pete, the Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division, dot, dot, dot. The Burners are uh, holding court. Uh, with a record of 11-6, and six, they have a two-game lead over the uh, Freedom the, and the Moose, who are sitting at 9-8. and eight. Down in the Uncharted division, the New York Wild Pigs are still out in front by a half game in front of the San Diego Platypi, at, who are playing 10-8. and eight. Uh, Down in the Journey division, the Arctics are holding a half game lead over the Sandcats, and it's really kind of a scheduling situation. The Arctics sitting at 10 and 7 while the Sandcats are 10 and 8 so they're a half game out. There's a lot of happy Phoenix fans there. <laughs> the <clears throat> over here in the Explorer Conference Seafarer Division, the Houston Jacks are knotted up in first place with the Gold Coats, both teams with 11 and 6 record, two games out in front of the next. Um, in the Trade Division, the Nemesis at 10 and 7 uh, have a one-game lead over the herbivores. The now slumping herbivores. <laughs> <laughs> herbivores are nine and eight. Um, and then our very own bee wolves at five and twelve are sitting five games out of first place. They are. And then down in the Curiosity Division, these warblers we're going to face today are leading that division eleven and six. That's a that's a solid uh, a solid. They got a one-game lead over both the wide loads and the moon stars ten seven. And again, Pete, this is another game where the Beavles are going up against a solidly winning team and a first place team. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that several times. That uh, the Beavles really have gotten a, a, a hard road to hoe here in the in the uh, beginning months. They've faced a lot of really difficult uh, competition right out of the block, and and then uh, as as we've talked about also with the Beavles stumbling out of the block it didn't really help to come up against we you know every game come up against uh first second place talent you know and, and when you're struggling to get find your swing so um hopefully we'll get it we'll get it under control we got the warblers we're going to have uh, after this we got the wide loads again they're they're fighting it out for a first place position um and then we start to see a, a little bit more of uh of uh easier competition i think yeah. Well, today's game, the Warblers 11-6 are bullpen beasts. Not known for their starting pitching, but their bullpen they can dig into is quite impressive. They're going against the Beavles, who are contact specialists, Pete. No longer speed demons. No, well, I, I think it's uh, their their ability to get thrown out trying to steal. I think it's <laughs> <Yeah. that, laughs> taking that away from them. <laughs> But I think um, if they had more steals, they'd, they'd be able to hold on to that. But the thing is about the Warblers, they call them a bullpen beast. They were bullpen beasts when we met up with them the first time this year early on. Um, and yet their their roster is filled with power hitters. They hit hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and even though their starting pitching isn't remarkable, this, these expansion Warblers are going to put uh, the, their left-hander, Ashton Tapia, on the mound today. And Ashton is uh, juiced. He's and he's playing better than he normally has throughout his career. So he's he throws the ball. He's throwing the ball pretty hard. His junk's fine, and his accuracy is pretty good. He's got a two and two record on the season with a three five seven ERA and a one one five WHIP. Yes, sir. And then notable players. Uh, they've got um, Ash Lewis. I believe it's Ash. Um, yeah, Ash Lewis, the right fielder. Uh, he looks like he's tense, but he's juiced. And again, he's got that power that we talked about. His ability to connect is uh, about average. And then he's got he can he can make some things happen on the base pass. He's a little bit faster than average. He's hitting 271 with no home runs. And then um, Edwin Chops, the uh, 
home run hitter. We were just talking about him at the end of the last game. He's on the uh, list for most home runs in the league. Um, and he is he's locked three. in. Yeah, number three. Um, he's locked in, plays center field. You can see that power bar is all the way up. His ability to connect, he's connecting at a better clip than he had been in previous uh, seasons. And he's got a lot of speed, so if he can get on base, he can cause some some problems. He's hitting 329 uh, on the season with eight home runs, which, as Tommy pointed out, puts him in third for the most home runs on the season so far. And then you got Barney Schaefer, the shortstop. Barney Schaefer is the uh, is the player who hit the game winning two run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. The first time we we faced these guys, we were tied going into the ninth inning, and and Barney Schaefer hit the the game winning home run. He's juiced. Um, his he's got showing more speed um, than than he has typically over the course of his career. His fielding and his arm are uh, he's playing way way out of his head right now he's playing really well in the field so uh he's gonna be a hard one to get but the ball passed out there in short at shortstop he's hitting 239 on the season with three home runs absolutely well the uh the Beavles are gonna have uh, their starting pitcher gonna use the right-hander Beavis Ortiz who had a strong game in his last his last performance if I remember correctly he's he's pretty down the middle uh he throws the ball hard enough he's got good movement on it good accuracy He's got an 0-2 record on the season, so he's looking for his first win today. Um, he's got a 4.64 ERA, which is nothing too too bad, and a 0.98 whip. Yeah, yeah, and as as Tommy just pointed out, his last, uh, much like Hurley Bender, um, his last outing, he showed he showed that he can be he could be hard to hit. Um, so we're hoping we get another outing, kind of like uh, Hurley. Uh, kind of like Hurley, uh, where he comes out and is just dominant today. Uh, the notable players for the uh, B Wolves, obviously, Alora Franco at first base. She's got a lot of power. Her ability to connect and her speed are, are exceptional. She's hitting 400 on the season, but still hasn't been able to go yard yet this year. Buster Biggs in left field is locked in, and his power, his ability to connect, and his speed is better than he's had his entire career. Um, he's he's exceptional at all three, and he's hitting 30, 333 with three home runs, and I think that puts him in a tie for first place on the team. I think uh, the most home runs our home run, uh, our players have are three, and I think there's two. I think uh, Biggs and LeBoink both have three. I believe you're right. Um, Henry, uh, Henley. <laughs> <laughs> Henley Dexterra is uh, the superstar shortstop. Um, he's got good. Uh, he's got better than average power, and he's got exceptional uh, ability to see the ball and connect. and And he's got some supposedly great speed <laughs> <laughs> on the base path. Um, but he is happens to be on the list of uh, guys who get thrown out trying to steal bases. So, um, yeah, and, and he does. It's not like he's he's got. You know, he's on the list for most stolen bases as well. He just seems to get thrown a lot of that. Um, but he's hitting 274 with no home runs as well. So uh, I'd like to see these B Wolves start putting the ball over the fence a little bit more frequently. But um, as long as it's a W at the end of the day, if we got to play small ball, well, that's that's what we got to do. <clears throat> well, before we go to the the uh, lineup here, just notice there's three of the notable of the starting notable players there in the picture. You got three people who are juiced for the Warblers. So that's going to be. That's going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at today's lineup, getting the suggested lineup in for the assistant coach, and it looks like this. Pete starting and first in the batting order, Hanley Dexteris at shortstop, followed right behind by Billy LeBoink in the second slot. He'll be playing right field. Buster Biggs, third slot, left field, and he is locked in today, Pete. So it's good, it's be good to see more of those home run opportunities from the big man. Elora Franco, the first baseman, as usual, playing there. Ruby Green will be playing third base. Ruby Green, Pete, is being suggested. Okay. So they're giving Bertha Banks a seat. It looks like Bertha Banks is a little bit tense. So Green comes okay. in, and she's actually a, a better hitter, and she's even got better power. The only problem is it's her secondary position, so her fielding takes quite a hit. So uh, they're, they're hoping to get some offense from her basically yeah and like you said that's that's the one thing is that uh, Bertha Banks is is exceptional defensively but she has struggled at the plate yeah um, very much like Johnson Swanson yeah you sure. know although Johnson Swanson's defense yeah. wasn't very good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be good to see Ruby at, at the base yeah she's, 
She's easy on the eyes as well. Gina Torrens <laughs> at second base. She'll be in there today. She's doing great. As usual, Magic Moore in center field. What can you say about Magic Moore? Uh, Eliza Peck is getting the nod, Pete, to play her first okay. her first game for the Beebles. A home game here. Steve Monster as well. But like you say, these catchers that kind of go back and forth with them. So it'll be, it'll be exciting to see what Eliza could do for her, her new team. And I'm sure she's eager to get out there. And then you got Beavis Ortiz will be taking the bump. He throws the four finger, the curveball, the slider, and the fork pitch. Those are some great pitches. And as we go to the field, Pete, here, this will be the second matchup this season between these two teams. Second and last. It's an inter. It's a. It's a conference game, but they're in a different division. So it's a day game in the heat. So they close the dome and turn on the air. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I was going over the game film from the first game, and man, it was exciting. Back and forth all the way up until the final out. And then I mean that two-run homer in the, in the bottom of the ninth to win it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to a good one here. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Eliza Peck. The Warblers have Barney Schaefer at shortstop, uh, Chops in center field, Haley at first base, Lewis in right field, Milk Roosevelt at second base, Riva, Riva, Rivas, the third base, Turnip in left field, Person at catching. And then, of course, they have a uh, pitcher. Um, <laughs> Barney Schaefer, Edwin Chops, and Lennox Haley going to take a quick gander at Beavis Ortiz, and we'll get this one going. We will, sir. We're going to get another crack at these guys. You get a win this Bar time. Yes. Barney Schaefer's hitting 239. Oh. He is on the season. Yeah. And there's Eliza Peck behind the plate. Excited to be a B-Wolf. The fans are excited to see her here today. Barney Schaefer's a juice. The outfield's going to go back and play deep for Mr. Schaefer, who is juiced and has a ton of power. Like Pete said, his average has got three home runs on the season at seven RBIs. First pitch was in there for a ball. The second pitch misses low and away. Good stop back there by Peck. Third pitch inside corner, swing and a miss. Strike one, two and one to count, top of the first. Good crowd on hand today. That pitch is low. Made it in there, just missed ball three. Three and one to count to Ortiz, number 43, throwing his fifth pitch right now. Misses high, batter walked. Now batting the okay. Edwin number Chops six. comes up at 320 on the season with eight home runs, Pete. He likes that pitch close and inside. Ortiz getting a signal from Peck, goes outside, misses. The outfield's going to go deep as well for Mr. Chops here. The pressure is medium because they know what Chops can do. And he hits that one. It's stopped by Torrens, who gets one out and couldn't quite turn the double play, but they got the lead runner, Pete. Good dive by Torrens to stop that one. <coughs> yes, sir. Lennox Haley hitting 261. Got power against lefties, which doesn't really matter here. He likes the high pitch. That goes over the glove of, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh, and he misses it. Buster Biggs misses it. It gets past third base. Oh, and it turns into a double, Pete. That was bad feeling. It went over Ruby Green's head, and then <coughs> left fielder missed it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's got me all choked up. <laughs> Beavis Ortiz throwing Ashley Owens on the inside corner. Can't see because my stupid... Ash Lewis was also juiced, but tense. That was a strike on the inside corner. Strike one. Ortiz really kind of has to strike him out here. That one's in the outside corner, strike two. One and two, the count with runners at second, third. That curveball's hit down the line. Franco gets it. She's going to have to toss to first. She gets it second out, but the Warblers get one in. That was a tough hit down the line, and she knocked it down. Milk Roosevelt comes up hitting 329. Still a runner at third base with two outs. They're going to need an out here. Inside corner, strike one to Roosevelt. Like I said, a one nothing game in the top of the first. That one is oh, hit down no. the line and it's foul, luckily. Frank down the line. The, the infield's going to play the lines <laughs> on Roosevelt. 0-2 the count. He needs one more strike, does Ortiz. Maybe he can get him chasing. Looking for a signal from Peck. Gets it, just misses inside. <clears throat> Ball one. 1-2 one the count with two outs. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that was nice to see there, Pete. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think their tease is a little t is a little tight, <laughs> and mm. they do the stare as Billy LeBoyne and Buster Biggs going to come up in the bottom of the first. Ashton Tapia 
is going to take the, the bump for the uh, the Warblers. Dexteris is hitting 274 with no home runs and an RBI. He's a tough out and a good utility player. First pitch is in there for a called strike, strike one. Ooh. That one's inside, ball one, one and one. There's a swing and fouled off along the first baseline, out of play. Hanley Dexteris is known around the league as a tough out. One ball, two strikes. That's a shot to the second baseman. Roosevelt picks it up, makes the throw to Haley at first to retire. Dexteris. Billy Hoyt coming up hitting 318 on the season. He's got three home runs of his own. 13 RBIs. Likes to pitch in the top half. Gets it. Smashes it hard to center field, but it's a line drive into the glove of Chops for two outs. Two outs. Buster Biggs, the left fielder, hitting 333. Three home runs and nine RBIs on the season. Two outs in the bottom of the first. That's into the gap. That's going to get back to the wall. And Buster Biggs is on his horse. Coming around, he's going to pull in the second with a double. Hey there, Way Buster to go, Buster. Biggs. Yeah, you can count on him. He's, he's doing great so far, Pete. Number Laura Franco comes up hitting 400 on the season. We're still looking for that long ball from Laura Franco to get out of here at some point. High and inside, that's going to go into left center, and that's going to bring Biggs home, Pete. And Franco's going to make it to second. It's going to be a stand-up double, and they score the run in with two outs, and this game is tied up. All right, Alora, way to go. Ruby Green hitting 321 in the season with a home run and two RBIs. Two outs, top of the bottom of the first. The game is tied up. One to one, that's high. Ball one, one and oh. That's inside, ball two, two and oh. That's inside, ball three, three and oh. And Tapia's tense. Tapia just walked Ruby Green on four pitches, I believe, or was it? Five. No, that was four pitches. Well, she never swung the bat. Gina Torrance Gina comes Torrance. up, hitting 311 on the season. With runners at first and second base. A great offensive opportunity. Takes her first pitch inside for a ball. One no the count. She pops that one up, and that's going to end the side. Calling it off in left field is Turnip. Three down. Three down, but they tie it up. So uh, Warblers, one run on one hit with the B-Wolves, one run on two hits. Coming up in the top of the second, Latoya Rivas, baller turnip and hubbub person. Ortiz threw 16 pitches. He's got a, a strikeout, a walk, and a hit in that first inning. Rivas, Rivas, the third baseman. She's hitting 500 on the season with no home runs and three RBIs. That's popped up. Oh no, they gave it to the wrong person. Oh, and it drops foul. Sorry about that. They, I thought they gave me Franco, so I was running him back. <laughs> <laughs> it's foul along the first baseline, out of play. That second pitch is in there for called strike. No balls, two strikes to Rivas. Ortiz delivers. That's a little low, ball one, one and two. Nice trap by Franco. No, not Franco. That's inside ball two, two and two. That's fouled off along the first baseline again. Two balls, two strikes, no outs in the top of the second. That's a shot to Franco. She's going to take it herself for the first out. Now batting the left fielder. Baller turn up the left fielder hitting 250 with one home run and eight RBIs. He has power against right handed pitching. That's inside, ball one, one and oh. Tease delivers. That's in there for a call, strike. Evens up the count at one, one and one. Swing and a miss, and Turnip couldn't catch up with that one. He's in the hole now, one ball, two strikes with one out. That's fouled off. Just got enough to push it off foul along the first baseline. Out of play. That's a shot to Dexteris, who picks it up, makes the throw to first to retire that guy. <laughs> Hubba Person, the catcher. He's hitting 170 on the season, no home runs and three RBIs. Ortiz is at 27 pitches. That's in there for a call, strike, strike one. Ortiz delivers. That's in there for a call. Second strike. And very quickly, Person is in the hole. 0-2. Oh, 
Ortiz delivers, swing and a miss. Make it 21 Ks on the year for Beavis Ortiz. 21 Ks. <laughs> Coming up in the bottom of the second, Magic Moore, Eliza Peck, and Beavis Ortiz. Eliza Peck for the first time. Ashton Tapia threw 13 pitches in that first inning, gave up a walk and two hits, as well as a run. Magic Moore, the center fielder, hit 245, two home runs, and five RBIs. He's got connection versus left handed pitching. That's in there for called strike, strike one. That's a shot to the second, uh, short, short, shortstop. The, <laughs> the second shortstop. I was going to say, I got, I got stuck in a groove there. Here she is, Pete Eliza Peck, with no average for a first at bat in the league. Smashes one into right center field. That's going back, and her first, her first hit here, Pete. She's coming into second, slides in for a double. Welcome to the B-Wolves, Ms. Peck. There you go. All right. Beavis Ortiz, the pitcher, hitting 143 on the season with no home runs and an RB and an RBI and an RB. <laughs> <laughs> he got a beef and cheddar at the Arby's the other day. Go ahead. That's in there for a cold strike. Strike one. That's fouled off along the third baseline, and Ortiz finds himself behind 0-2. Oh. That's over the outside corner for cold strike three. Ortiz goes down on strikes. Hanley Dexteris, 0 for 1, 270. So Dexteris hoping to get Ms. Peck home here. Swing and a miss late on that outside pitch strike, 1 0 1 the count. Bottom of the second, 1 apiece. That went up near his elbow. Ball 1, 1 and 1. Another one, same spot, ball 2, and he's ahead in the count. 2 and 1. That's his pitch, and it's into left or to right center field. Everyone's going around. Peck's going to come home as slow as she is. Stand-up double for, for Hanley next to his nice RBI, and the B-Wolves are out front, 2-1. Here we go, B-Wolves. Billy LeBoyne, the right fielder, hitting 0 for 1 on the day, hitting 313 on the season. He likes the high pitch. Two outs, runner at second in the form of the, the speedy Dexteris. It's in there for a called strike. Allen's low, evens up the count at 1, 1-1. One one. That's in there for a called second strike. That swung through the gap, and everybody's going to be safe. That goes into left field, and LeBoyk is standing at first with Dexter as a third. He is, and here comes Buster Biggs, who's one for one with a double, hitting 343. He's threatening to bring home Dexteris from third, and he hits it, Pete, into center field. That's going to bring him in. It's a nice single. Dexteris crosses the plate, and it's a 3-1 Beatles lead. Yes, Laura Franco, the first baseman. She's neutral. Neutral and fit. She's one for one with a double in the first inning. Two outs in the bottom of the second. That's a smash. And everybody's going to be safe. Knocked down. Nope. Oh, no. Knocked down by the third baseman. The shortstop was able to recover and make the throw to first to get a Laura Franco. Wow, I thought she was going to beat that out. I'm <laughs> sorry. Top of the third, Ashton Tapia, Barney Schaefer, and Edwin Chops going to face Ortiz, who's thrown 30 pitches. We got two strikeouts. 30 pitches in two innings. Eesh. Ashton Tapia comes up tense, but he's hitting 400 on the season. He's juiced, so you never know what he's going to do. Take the first pitch inside, ball one, one on the count. Top of the third, three, one. B Wolves over the Warblers. Outside corner misses again, ball two. How much are they paying you, huh? <laughs> Everyone well, gets that one on the inside corner strike, one, two and one on the count. Ump doesn't like Pete's commentary. Great crowd here on hand today. Ooh, he catches that foul ball, pushes it left down the first base side. Two apiece, evened up. Here comes Ortiz. That one misses inside, gets away from Peck. Gets a new signal, delivers, strikeout! That's the third K today, right, Pete? Yep. Tapia goes down swinging. When up comes Barney Schaefer. He's got a walk hitting 239. He's juiced. He's hitting good power. The outfield's going to go deep. For Mr. Schaefer. He hits that one to Franco, who reaches out and grabs it for the second out. That was about to go deep to right field. Edwin Chops comes up 0 for 1. Edwin likes the inside pitch, and the outfield's going to go deep for Mr. Chop as well. Ortiz winds up, delivers. Way outside. Infield's going to guard the line. Infield's going halfway. Strike one. One apiece. Infield's going to guard the line. All right. 1 1 and 2. Top of the third, Sue, check swing inside corner, strike two. 
One and two the count. Beavis Ortiz is throwing 40 pitches. Gets a signal for Peck. Delivers number 41. Swing and a miss on the outside corner. He's got four Ks, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got, I'd like to see him bring that pitch count down, but that's okay. <laughs> two strikeouts in the innings, all right. Ruby Green, Gina Torrens, and Magic Moore coming up in the bottom of the third. Tapia's throwing 29 pitches with a strikeout of walking, giving up six hits. B Wolves holding a 3 1 lead. Ruby Green, the first baseman, has got a walk on the day, hidden. Oh. Green is uh, she's hitting 321 for as little as she plays. She's doing really well. First pitch on the outside corner, strike one. Oh, one the count. That one's high. Ooh, and it makes it in for strike two. Oh, and two the count. Oh, breaks a bat on a high inside pitch. Roosevelt at second gets it. Throws her out at first. One down. Gina Torrens, the second baseman. She's neutral in pitch. She's 0 for 1 in the day, hitting 306 with no home runs, two RBIs. Takes that first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. That one's along the first baseline to Haley, who picks it up, makes the run himself to retire Torrance. Magic Moore comes up, 0 for 1 of the day, hitting 240. This, this part of the rotation's got to start getting some hits. First pitch in there, low, ball one, one of the count to, to Magic Moore. Ball two, he's quickly out ahead, two and O. Oh. That one's low ball three, and now he's he's got a three none. Ashton Tapia floats one in there for a strike. We'll see what happens here. Three and one to count. That one he hits, but straight to the second baseman mm -hmm. Roosevelt throws him out. One two three. Yeah, we're gonna get need to get more production out of that part of the lineup. Uh, coming up in the top of the fourth, Lennox Haley one for one with a double. Ash Lewis zero for one. Milk Roosevelt zero for one with a strikeout. Ortiz has thrown forty one pitches, got four strikeouts of no, walk. Man. And giving up one hit. I believe that's one hit, right? Mm -hmm. um, this guy is Lennox Haley. He likes the high pitch. He's playing first base for the Warblers. First pitch is in there for a called strike. Haley's hitting 277 on the season. That's mm -hmm. into the gap between. Uh -oh. oh, he gets a double. Yeah. He gets a double, but he throws to first instead of second. Yeah, uh, Magic Moore went to first for some reason instead of going either to the cutoff or second base, <laughs> which <laughs> because the ball was in the air longer, it allowed uh, it allowed him to turn, make the turn and get to uh, second. That's a high pop fly in the infield. Frank goes underneath and makes the catch for the first out. One out, man, it's second. Milk Roosevelt, 0 for 1 in the day. He's feeling neutral and fit, hitting 324. He's got eight RBIs on the season. That's a slow roller. Oh, oh. they're both safe. Yeah, everyone makes it. On that the, one the, the runner at second didn't have a lot of speed, so he was hoping to get that thrown out. Okay, so we got a minute first and third with one out. Latoya Rivas is up. She's locked in and fit. Uh oh. Great jump dexterous. Gets her at first, but the run comes in. They get the run, yeah. But he was able to, to pull it in and, and throw her out at first. So there's two outs with a runner at first. Baller turn up has power versus right-handed pitching. He's hitting 246 with a home run and eight RBIs. A little bit of shaky defense out there right now, Tom. I don't. I think we sh we could have played this a lot tighter and probably <laughs> should have played it a lot better than, than it came out but uh, no harm done yet uh, that one's high ball two two and oh to turn up that's in there for called strike two balls one strike that's inside ball three three and one with two outs in the top of the fourth that's in there for called second strike the count is full three balls two strikes two outs that's a swing and a miss and Ortiz gets the strikeout when he needs it. Way to go, Beavis. <laughs> Warblers, two runs on two hits. The Beavis, three runs on six hits. Coming up at the bottom of the fourth, Eliza Peck, one for one with a double. Beavis Ortiz, 0 for one with a strikeout. And Hanley Dexterous, one for two with a double. Now batting the captain, number Eliza 50. Peck, one for one with a double. She's hitting a 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Tapia delivers. That one's high. Ball one. One and oh. It's inside, ball two, two and oh. Whoop. Swing and a miss. <laughs> two and one. That's high, ball three, three and one. That's a walk. Eliza Peck 
will take a walk on five pitches. Way to go, Eliza. She's gotten she's reached both times she was up. <laughs> Beavis Ortiz comes up 0 for 1, 125 of the season. It was a bad strikeout that first first time. I think three pitch strikeout. First pitch is a ball, second pitch is swing and miss strike. One apiece, bottom of the fourth, three two B Wolves. That one drifts outside, ball two. And it looks like Toppy is losing some stamina. It throws his 48th pitch. Wow, Ortiz hands out a souvenir on the first base side. Still two apiece. And he pops that one up in the left field, and it's going to go into oh. the glove to turn up for the first out. Go. Oh. <laughs> Good hit, though. I got a lot of hiccup right there. Hanley next stares the superstar shortstop. He's one for two with a double and an RBI. Eliza Peck does not have a lot of speed on the base pass, so she will not be stealing. That's high. Ball one. One and oh. Top is delivered his 51st pitch as a ball, 2-0. Here's a shot by Hanley Dexter as the Nets hey. gone. All right, his first home run of the season. Way to go. Hanley Dexter 414 feet. That's his first home run in his 30 RBI of the season. I think things are turning around here, Tommy. <laughs> wow, what time. It finally gets that home run. We're looking at you, Laura Franco. <laughs> Billy LeBank. Billy the Bank, Billy the Boink, one for two on the day. Smith, oh my gosh. Oh, he hit that one right back to the mound, and and the, the pitcher goes down. We're gonna see we're gonna see a substitution here. Buster Big. Be up. careful because the bullpen for the warblers is better than their starting pitchers. Okay, leaving the game, Ashton Tapia, who's been injured. Um and coming in is Frederick Wells, the relief pitcher. Wells is neutral and juiced. He's got a 2.30 ERA, a 1.47 whip, and he's got 14 strikeouts on the season. He's pitching far better than his uh, stats would suggest. His velocity is up, his accuracy is up, and he's, he's got a lot of junk. He throws a four seam, a slider, and a changeup. We're also gonna see Baller Turnup, the left fielder, be replaced by Dash Bugby. Dash Bugby, a first baseman, is going to come in and play left field. So Bugby has a 217 average with a home run. He's got uh, average speed. His fielding is very poor. So anything to the left field could possibly be extra bases. And he's got a little bit better than average arm. So don't be afraid to push it if you hit it to left field. That's a that's a wild pitch. Uh oh. And, got him. Uh, yeah. Billy LeBoink is not the guy to do that with. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One ball, two balls to uh, Buster Biggs. Two outs. There's a shot. That's high and deep. And the center fielder is out there. And Chops is under it and makes the catch just at the start of the warning track. But the B-Wolves pick up two more. So it's 5-2, Tommy, as we head into the top of the fifth. Hubbub Person, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Dash Bugby. His first at bat, and Bar Barney Schaefer over one with a walk. Now batting the catcher, number. I hope Toppy is going to be all right there. <clears throat> Hubba Pearson, I Pearson, hope so too. O for one on the day, one sixty-seven. The catcher. Where's the cage? In front and behind, and at the plate. First pitch by Ortiz inside corner, strike one. No one on the count. Top of the fifth, five two. Eagles over Warblers. Eagles Ortiz looking for his fifty-fifth signal from Eliza Peck, he gets it, winds up, delivers, it's low down the side, Franco picks it up on the line and walks it over for the out. <coughs> Dash Bugby, <coughs> 217, he came in in relief in left field, he's got a lot of power. Ortiz throws it to him, swing and a miss on that slider, only one to count. Second pitch. Swing and a miss, high strike, high fastball on the upper outside. He goes for the three pitch strikeout. He does, Pete. Three pitches, three swings. Wow, big K by Ortiz. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> His pitching staff is really, they are revved up. Man. Yeah, they are, man. Barney Schaefer comes to, he's got power against right handers, and he's juiced. So you gotta be careful throwing to him. Puts it right in there, and that goes over the glove. Of uh, of whoever's at third, <laughs> and it's gonna be a single in the left field. The center fielder, number six. Uh oh, here comes Edwin, Edwin Chops. Chops. He's locked in, looking. 
Got a lot, he's got some speed at first base. Chops gets the first pitch low and away, misses. The outfield's going to play back on him. He likes the inside pitch. Let's see what Ortiz does. Gets a signal from Peck. Winds up, delivers. Puts a fork pitch in there nicely. Strike one. One and one the count with two outs. Top of the fifth. And runner on first. Strike. Fastball upper left. One and two. Gets him on that third pitch, man. He's throwing the K's, Pete. Beavis Ortiz. Yes, sir. Coming up in the bottom of the fifth, Alora Franco went for two with a double. Ruby Green 0 for 1 with a walk. And Gina Torrens 0 for 2. Wells has thrown three pitches so far in his brief appearance. B Wolves with a 5 2 lead. Alora Franco, first base. 82. 1 for 2 with a double and an RBI. She's hitting 404 this season. She wants her first home run. Gets the first pitch from Frederick Wells way outside. Ball one. Wells is juiced. Throws that one in there fast. Franco hits that one up to the right side foul. Upper deck souvenir. Hands okay. that one down the left side foul. One and two. That one is low. Ball two. Evened up in the bottom of the fifth. Here comes Wells. Inside. She hits a grounder to third base. Rivas picks it up. Throws it to first for the first out. All right. Ruby Green, the first baseman. She's neutral and fit. She's 0 for 1 on the day with a walk. Hitting 310 on the season with a home run and two RBIs. Takes that first pitch high. Ball one. One and oh. It's in there. Evens up the count at one. One and one. There's a smash into left field, and Duck Bugby's able to run it down for the second out. I thought that was going to land in there real quick. Gina Torrance, I did too. Gina Torrance looking a little bit tense. She's 0 2 on the day, but she's a great contact hitter. Pitch curve misses outside, or the slider misses outside. Ball one, second one is strike one. One a piece of two outs. She hits that one hard to left field, but it's a line drive to Bugby, who's going to end that side. That's <laughs> <laughs> that was hit good, but yeah, it just hung up long enough for Bugby to get under it. Top of the six, Lennox Haley two for two with two doubles. Ash Lewis 0 for two, and Milk Roosevelt 0 for two with a strikeout. Ortiz with seven strikeouts on the day, Tommy. Oh. Number two 22. doubles. Yeah, two doubles. Jeez. He likes the high pitch, Lennox Haley, hitting 292. That's uh, in there for a called strike. Strike one. Beavis Ortiz is up to 65 pitches in the sixth inning. Delivers that one. That's uh, a little inside. Ball one. One and one. That's a little low. Ball two. Two and one to Lennox Haley, the first baseman. That's in there for a called strike. Two and two. Count is evened up. Ortiz delivers. That was high, but anticipated by Haley. It's a little high. Three and two. Full count. Ortiz delivers. It's fouled off along the first baseline into the dugout. He heads up. Watch out. There's a shot. The Torn's going to step over, pick it up. Double pump over to Franco for the out. One out. And Ortiz's mojo has gone up. <laughs> Ash Lewis, the right fielder. He's tense but juiced. Hitting 264 on the season. Checks his swing but gets called strike. Strike one. Lewis is good connection against right-handed pitchers. That one's inside. Ball one. One and one. Ortiz looks in, gets the signal, delivers for a call, second strike. One ball, two strikes to Lewis. A broken bat, and Alora Franco gives chase, but that's in the stands along the first baseline. We'll re-rack it and do it again. One ball, two strikes from the locked-in Beavis Ortiz. That's fouled off deep along the third baseline into the stands. One ball, two strikes. A swing and a miss. Sash Lewis goes down. That'll be eight. Eight Ks on the day. Does Beavis Ortiz actually hit double digits, Tommy? Oh, I don't want I don't want to jinx it. He's at 77 right now on the top of the sixth. He's locked in though, Tom. That's in there for called strike. Milk Roosevelt, the second baseman, he steps in. He's hitting 320 on the season. He nice grab Dexterous who dives for it, throws, but it's not gonna be in time. He is in wheels. Made it yeah, he does. The he third does. Baseman, number 
18. Latoya Rivas, the third baseman, 0 for 2 with an RBI today. Two outs with a man on first. Rivas hitting 429. Takes the first pitch for a call. Strike. Strike one. Ortiz goes to first to keep the runner close. No balls. One strike. Two outs in the top of the six. Swing and a miss. Strike two. And very quickly, Rivas is in the hole. No balls, two strikes, the delivery, swing and a miss. She goes down on strikes. That's got to be nine, doesn't it? <laughs> That's got to be nine. That, that looks like nine to me. <laughs> Magic Moore 0 for 2. Eliza Peck 1 for 1 with a double and a walk. Beavis Ortiz 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Wells has thrown 14 pitches. And the B-Wolves have a 5-2 lead as we head into the bottom of the sixth. Magic Moore 0 for 2. I, don't, I hate to see anybody go 0 for 3. Me too. Magic Moore is 0 for 2 on the day. That's fouled off. He's in 235 on the season with two home runs and five RBIs. Get yourself in there in the lead there. Takes that second pitch for a called second strike. Uh, hits that along to Rivas at third base. She picks it up, makes the throw to Haley at first for the out. One out. Liza Peck, one for one with a double and a walk, batting a thousand feet. She's never not been on base in her whole career. <laughs> first pitch is inside, ball one, one another count. Great place to be for Peck. She hits that one up the middle, and she's going to be on again, Pete. She's unstoppable. I'm telling you. Pete feels good about that move. <laughs> <laughs> it's she's a good move. So so far, Beavis Ortiz is locked in and fit. He's 0 for 2 on the day. He hit 111. No home runs and an RBI. Peck does not have a lot of speed. She's not a threat to steal. There's a shot to the pitcher who was able to get his hand out and knock it down. They're able to get Ortiz at first, but Peck gets to second safely. And here comes Hanley Dexteris, two for three with a home run and a double, and a runner at second base, or a walker, I should say. Oh, and he pops that one up, and that's gonna end the side. Ranging over to get it is Bags. Bugby, Bugby, out number three. Oh, so close. Uh, coming up in the top of the seventh, Frederick Wells is first at bat. Hubbub Pearson, 0 for two with a strikeout, and Dash Bugby. 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Ortiz has 82 pitches, 9 strikeouts, a walk, and 4 now hits. The pitcher, number Wells Frederick. is locked in and juiced. He is. Good power. Oh, but there he goes. I was going to say good power and contact for a pitcher, but uh, I guess that's all we're going to see from Wells today, the relief pitcher. Pewter Fisher. Uh, who's normally plays left field. Huh. Is coming in. Uh, okay. Oh, pinch hitting. I'm sorry, he's pinch hitting. He's got good contact. Does Peter. <laughs> sorry. I didn't know I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so confused. The first pitch there for a strike. Good contact hitter pops that one up down the right first base line. Souvenir. 0-2 oh, out ahead is Ortiz throwing his 85th pitch. Just misses it high. Ball one, one and two the count. Even Ortiz is locked in. Still throwing pretty well too, just late in the game. Misses on that one to a piece. He's trying to get Fisher to chase something. There it is. He chases that one right to Torrens. He's going to scoop it up in second. Throw it to first. One down. Eight. All right. The catcher, number 46. Hubbub person. It's 0 for 2 on the day. It's well neutral. Pretty average by most counts. Hughes Ortiz lines up. Throws a pitch. Misses inside. Ball one. Eliza Peck back there doing a great job behind the plate her first day. Second pitch is in there for strike. One apiece. Peck calls the 90th pitch for Ortiz. That slider outside popped up to Gina Torrens off the bat. Two down, Pete. The left fielder, number four. And up comes Dash Bugby, 0 for 1, 208. But Bugby's got good power. And he's doing well out there in left field. Curveball misses high and inside, ball one. 1-0 one the count. That one's low and inside, ball two, top of the seven, five, two. Beagles over the Warblers with two outs, two no the count. Ortiz puts it in there, slider. He gets a piece down the first baseline, foul, two and one the count. That one's fastball inside, puts, a, puts that one in the crowd on the first baseline, two and two, evened up, two, two and two. Stig gets that, another strike up. He think that's ten, and he didn't like it, but it's okay. All right. Peter Fisher's double coming. digits, double digits. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Fisher's coming out of the game. Presley Barrett's coming in right field, or the relief pitcher. She's uh, she's got uh, okay velocity, great junk, and great accuracy. There. She's really something. She throws a forefinger to the slider and the curveball. Pete Beavis Ortiz is quietly 
playing an amazing game. Yes, he is. Bottom of the seventh. Bully LeBoyne, two for three. Buster Biggs, two for three with a double. And Alora Franco, one for three with a double. Presley Barrett's going to take over duties on the mound for the Warblers. B Wolves still holding on to that 5 2 lead. Let's let's put some space out there, boys. Let's get it going. Two for three, two singles hitting 333. He likes the high pitch. Barrett delivers. That's inside. Ball one. 1 0. Oh. There's a smash up the middle. Schaefer lays out for it, makes the throw to Haley and gets the slow LeBoyne at Great. first for the first out. Great play at shortstop for Schaefer there. Buster Biggs, yeah. two for three on the day. Takes the first pitch, hits it straight to Schaefer. He's going to make that an easy out. Two down. Okay. That was weird. Well, Laura Franco, the first baseman, she's one for three with a double and an RBI, hitting 396. Takes that first pitch for a cold strike, strike one. That's fouled off along the third baseline. 0-2. Oh. That's popped up into shallow right center, left center. It's all Schaefer. For the third out, yeah. We gotta, you know, these B-Wolves gotta be careful they don't make it easy on Barry. Mm. <laughs> Barney Schaefer, Edwin Chops, and Lennox Haley. Schaefer one for two with a walk. Chops 0 for three with two strikeouts. And Lennox Haley two for three with two doubles. Shortstop. Coming up against uh, Schaefer, one for two, a single and a walk. He's got power versus right-handed pitching. Ortiz is up to 95 pitches. And that's a shot to uh, Dexteris, who picks it up, double pumps, and throws to Franco for the first out. One out. Edwin chops the center fielder. He likes the inside pitch. He's 0 for 3 on the day, hitting 316 with eight home runs and 12 RBIs. He's a dangerous hitter, this chops. That's popped up behind home plate. Eliza Peck is out, calling everybody off. Makes the catch for the second out. Two down. Two pitches Lennox and two Haley. outs. I like that. I like that. Lennox Haley, the first baseman. Two for three with two doubles. He likes the high pitch. He's going to get it. Right there. <laughs> That's in there for a called strike. Strike one. 0-1 oh in the top of the eighth. b Wolves five. Warblers 2, that's in there for called second strike, and Haley is in the hole 0-2 with two outs. That's a little outside, ball 1, 1-2. One Ortiz's velocity seems to be, seems to have gone down a little bit. That's outside, evens up the count at 2, 2-2. Two two. Ortiz delivers, and that's a shot to Dexteris, picks it up, makes the throw. Again, and again he beats it out. Beats it out. Jeez. Ortiz is up over 100 pitches. Oh, Ash Lewis, the right fielder, is tense and juiced. He's hitting 260 on the season. Ortiz is going to get a much deserved time off. He's coming out of the game. And in comes Benson Rushmore, the relief pitcher. He's got an ERA of 9.26. He's got a 2.06 whip and nine strikeouts on the season. He's feeling neutral and fit. His velocity and junk are moderate, and his accuracy eh, struggles a little bit, but he throws a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, and a curve. Rushmore facing off against Ash Lewis. First pitch was low, ball one, one and oh. That's in there for a called strike, one and one. And one. That's a shatters his bat. The ball is out of play. One ball, two strikes to Ash Lewis, the right fielder. And that's in there for cold third strike. Welcome to the game, Benson Rushmore. <laughs> Coming up in the bottom of the eighth. Ruby Green 0 for 2 with a walk. Gina Torrens 0 for 3. Magic Moore 0 for 3. Presley Barrett only threw six pitches in that short appearance in the seventh. We'll try to get to her quick here. Ruby Green, the first baseman, is 0 for 2 with a walk and 300 with a home run and two RBIs this season. 0 for 2, hoping to see her go 1 for 3. Takes the first pitch high inside, ball 1. Another count. Second one outside, she reaches for it, hits it straight to Schaefer. Again, it's the Schaefer show as he throws her out of first. One down. Gina Torrens is tense but fit. She's 0 for 3 on the day, hitting 297. No home runs, two RBIs. That's a shot in the center field. That'll drop for a clean single. Way to go, Gina. Turn that tense into bashing. <laughs> well, that one was <laughs> right down the middle. She could not swing at it. Magic Moore 0 for 3. 
231 of the season. There goes Torrance for second. He swings. It gets it through the gap. And it's going to go to left field. Torrance is going to hold up at second. His big Perfect hit and run. Yeah. The second baseman, I mean, the uh, shortstop broke to second, which opened up the hole. Eliza Peck, two for two. Double, single, and a walk. One out in the top of the eighth. Takes that first pitch in there for a called strike. Strike one. That's Good. way outside. They were, they were watching her on that. One and one. That's a smash oh. into center field. It's going to be caught by Chops in center field. Everybody's able to get back to their respective bases. Two outs. I didn't think she was ever going to be out, Pete. <laughs> well, it had to happen one time. I was very impressed that she reached the first three times she was up. Bench and Rushmore hitting 500 on this season. More power than oh. most pitchers. Pops it straight up. That's going to be out number three as Barrett pulls it in. Like I said, that was right down the middle. I couldn't not. <laughs> yeah. Coming up in the top of the ninth, Milk, Roosevelt, Latoya, Rivas, and Presley Barrett. Roosevelt 1 for 3 with a strikeout. Rivas 0 for 3 with a strikeout. And Barrett's first at bat. Rushmore threw four pitches and wound up with one strikeout. Number Roosevelt 1 for 3 with a single. 329. Rushmore number 44 is going to throw his fifth pitch when he gets a signal from Peck. Gets it. Winds up. Delivers. High inside. Ball one. One of the count. Hoping to get out of this side to win another game against a strong team. The B Wolves last place team playing a first place team again. And it's quickly two and one the count. Top of the ninth, low pressure. Rushmore's hoping to get this win here. As they say, popped up behind home plate. Peck's ranging over to get it. Lost it for a second. Grabs the ball on the first base line. One down, Pete. The third base has been number eight. Yes, sir. Latoya Rivas, the first base woman for the the uh, Warblers, is 0 for 3 on the day, but she's hitting 400 on the season. So I'd be a little bit surprised if she didn't get on base here. Slider makes it high and inside. Strike one, 0 1 the count. With one out, top of the ninth. Rushmore puts that one low and away, a little too far away. Ball one, 1 1 1 to Rivas. His 11th pitch is inside, and that goes. Right in the hand of Dexter nice. is a diving catch. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. <laughs> Hope that comes out in the wash. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dexter has been playing his his heart out out there. Yeah, he gets his first home run and a great catch. Presley, he had a couple. Of, he had a couple of diving stops. That's it for Presley Barrett. She's going to come out in relief. Is going to be Uriel Jackson. Oh, third base. I'm sorry. She, he's going to be pinch hitting for for Barrett. Who will be up? He's got good power, fine contact, and pretty good speed. Uriel Erickson hoping to get out with two outs in the top of the ninth. He's the last hope for the Warblers. High and inside corner strike by Rushmore. Oh, and one the count. Fans are getting ready here. That slider low and away misses. Or was that a curveball? Slider. Slider. Fastball low and outside misses as well. Two and one the count to Uriel Erickson. That pitch is hit a line drive to Franco at first base. He's going to walk it down and get the third out. Pete and the B Wolves take another one against the first place team. And they even up the series with the Warblers on the season. And it's a big win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I'm happy about that. Ah. Oh, I watched that first game we played against these guys, and it was a back and forth battle. And, uh, and ultimately, they were able to come and win it in the bottom of the ninth. And I just I felt like we could beat these guys. I thought we could beat these guys. All yeah. right. Well, it all started off in the first. Warblers got ahead. Beat this is the third game in a row where the other team has taken the lead first. And the B-Wolves have battled from behind to beat a first-place team. It was one, And then they, they tied up one apiece in the first. They get two more in the second. And then the uh, the Warblers tie it up in the fourth, but quickly the B-Wolves get two more. No, no, they were still behind because the uh, B-Wolves had three. No, we, oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. It was three, two. You're right, you're right. And then we added two more to insurance five, and then it was a pitching duel for the rest of the game. Uh, only five hits for the first place Colorado Springs Warblers, and uh, they leave here with only two runs. The B-Wolves get 11 hits and five runs and take it. Tom, I, I'm, I'm almost, I'm verklempt over here. I'm getting misty-eyed. I, I never thought I would see the B-Wolves with 11 hits. The last <laughs> time we saw these guys, it was like, 
the idea of getting 11 hits was like, oh my God, that would have been, we would have been on an easy street back then, but things are turning around and I'm, I'm happy. It makes me happy. Boy, the Warblers, they're, they're the, the dangerous batter that we were so afraid of. Edwin Chops goes 0 for 4 on the day. He scores one run, but he strikes out twice. Right behind him, though, Haley goes 3 for 4. I think he got the two doubles or something like that. Yeah, but oh, by the by the same token, we he got three for four. He did score a run, but we didn't let him beat us. Yeah. Even though he hit three for four, he only scored one run. No RBIs, no home runs, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, you know he 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 did have a, a really good day, but you know he didn't beat us. And again, we we talked about this with the Hurley Bender. He threw a four hitter. This is a five hitter. Yeah. He threw a five hitter. You know? <laughs> yeah. Got double digit strikeouts. Great you know? pitching again. Great pitching for the third straight game. Great pitching. When you went from LaShawn, Deshaun Levon to Hurley Bender to, yeah, to Beavis Ortiz. Just three great, yeah. great highlight reels. Great games. outings. Yeah, just great outings. And again, like I say, we've been. Uh, the B Wolf pitchers have been flirting with a double, a double digit day. And uh, leave it to Beavis Ortiz to to come up and get the first one. So, yeah. well, your 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 new friend Eliza Peck, starting catcher today, she goes two for three, gets two runs, gets walked one. She's got a six sixty seven batting average, beat. Yeah, yeah. How about I couldn't live with that. I think I could live with that more than uh, Johnson Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll talk about Warblers pitching because you can talk about it. Okay. Right. So Tapia comes in. It pitches 3.1 innings, gets eight hits off, uh, five earned runs, two walks, one strikeout, one home off, a 4.85 ERA, two and three on the season with this loss. Uh, Wells comes in relief, throws 2.2, gets one hit. He's got a 1.96 ERA uh, and 3 and 0 for the season. Barrett comes in to close out those two innings, get two, gets two hits off, uh, 6.08 ERA, two and one on the season. Yeah, and then over for the B Wolves, uh, Beavis Ortiz went seven and two thirds innings. He gave up five hits. That's it, five <laughs> hits over the course of seven and a half, seven and two thirds innings. Nice. He had two earned runs, a walk, had tallied ten strikeouts, brings his ERA down to four point oh three, and, and improves his record to one and two. Um, Benson Rushmore came in in relief. He pitched a, an inning and a third. Gave up no hits, no earned runs, did not walk anybody. He had one strikeout. So he faced, I mean, he had he had to get four outs, one of which was a strikeout. Um, his ERA comes down to 8.31, and he tallies this, his first save on the season. So, And I know Benson Rushmore is the, the, like the final B-Wolf player who's kind of uh, being eyeballed for potential movement in the season. So I know he's, he's looking to play his best baseball. I think he yeah. showed up today. Uh, to make his case and, and, and spoke pretty well for himself. <laughs> I I agree with that, Tom. I, and it, but it was like something we would, we had always said was our. It really comes down to our starting pitchers because we weren't getting long outings from them. We were putting a lot of pressure on the relievers, and I think Benson Rushmore. I can't remember the last time he saw service, so he was ready. You know what yeah. I mean? He was yeah. he was ready to go and he proved it he came out and he pitched a heck of a uh, an inning in the third speaking of starting pitchers let's hear about those uh, players of the game pete first player of the game and it's good to see this guy back in the players of the game superstar shortstop hanley dexteris he went two for four with a home run a double he had three rbis and he scored two runs himself that is great he belongs first there it's, it's, it's his, his place he's been out for a while Second place, our friend, the B-plus pitcher, starting pitcher, Beavis Ortiz, like you said, had his best game of the season, maybe one of the best of his career. Goes 7.2 innings, first of all. Gets only five hits off of it. You can count it on one hand. Only yeah. two earned runs through one walk. Yep, and then uh, rounding out the three stars, for the Warblers, Lennox Haley at first base. He went three for four with two doubles, and he scored a run. He did everything he could to help this get this try to get this team over the finish line, and unfortunately, he seemed to be the only one working at it. So, <laughs> what a game! Oh yeah. And Tommy G with four hits, a home run, two RBIs, two great catches, and five strikeouts with a 47 percent contribution. I had nice. seven hits, no home runs, three RBIs, three great catches, and six strikeouts for a 53 percent 
and it's nice to see him back on top for his change because <laughs> <laughs> he stinks that guy <laughs> oh another another great win there boy boy post game show yeah boy that's exciting that is exciting yeah Beavis Ortiz has got to be in the in the top 10 now of strikeouts mm-hmm because he came in, I think, with 20. So he's got to be up around... I mean, he's he's got to be at 30. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going there now. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the season standings right here. <laughs> yep, 6-12 and 12 now. I mean, we are, we are a losing team. It's going to take a while. I don't know if we can get a winning record, but... Uh, really made some headway in these last few games we did we, we did we an, we announced our presence with authority yeah it's the the warblers the first place team we just beat is still first place in their in their division yeah well they yeah they're at 11 and 6 yeah they you know we didn't hurt them too much although we did because um we didn't knock them out of first but the wide loads and the moon stars are now you know a half game closer so you know they're only a half game out yeah. breathing on the warbler's neck and uh we're only a half game behind the sirloins now so you know yeah we're knocking on their door and pretty soon we may not be in the cellar in the trade division we may be you know we may move up a, a position so yeah well way to go we're about to pack up here and head to new york city for the first time gonna be uh, we're on we'll be on a on a road a real road trip. We got in the next seven games, only one at home. We got three to go from New York to LA to St. Louis. <laughs> Talk about no, like, you know, connection. It's one end of the country. Then we come home to play the Moon Stars. Then we go down to Houston, out to uh, to Oakland, and then I guess I guess that last away game is actually in Phoenix against the Cats. Yeah, although yeah, because we play in the same, <laughs> yeah. the same stadium. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll be cool. Well, look, a little bit of development thing there. Steve Monster has got new contacts, which is I saw that his contact. Yeah, so his, his he goes from forty five to forty seven. He gets two more in his contact, so he's he's excited to get back out there again. He didn't like sitting on the bench for that. Game. I was, was going to say, Eliza Peck is starting to put a little pressure on Mr. Monster. We may see a little bit better, better. Uh, although he was playing well to begin with, but uh, we might see a little bit better production out of him. And, and uh, Maximilian Garcia has lowered his asking salary, so mm-hmm. he's down to five five. Yeah, it's nice to have options. I was going to say, if he, if what is, uh, not that I mean, again, after his excellent outing, I wouldn't. Immediately, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if I can pick up, okay. So uh, Rushmore is at three point four million. So we got a long ways to go before Maximilian Garcia gets down to that range. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. And, and again, like, as as Tommy pointed out, uh, Rushmore had a great outing. So I don't think he has anything to worry about. At least until his next poor outing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we can call it here then for the night, or for the day. It's been a great game here in Phoenix, and it was a great great win. Good to see this team on the uptick. Excited to uh, to get the, keep things going out there in New York and see how these guys can uh, maybe ramp it up going into the uh, wherever point we are in the season. What, are we on? what, what game have we played here? We're at 6-12. Uh, that would 12. be our 18th, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Warblers were our 18th game. Closing in on the halfway mark. All right. Yep, and we're heading in the right direction. Yes. All right. Well, until next time, this is Tommy G. And this is Pete J. And we're saying, celebrate good times. Get out! (laughs) Good night.